How's it going my bakers? I hope you're having a great day. Welcome to another episode. Today we'll find out what it really takes to overmix a bread dough. So let's go to the kitchen and check it out. I have been warning people about overmixing dough when converting recipes from hand mixed to machine mixed. And I guess it's mostly because I thought the mixer is a lot stronger. And I had overmixed the dough once a long time ago. But following my mixer conversion video, I thought let's just put this to the test. Let's see what it actually takes to overmix dough. We'll make four breads today. The first one will be mixed by hand and the other three in the mixer. We'll see how they change over time. We'll see how their temperature gets affected. We'll talk about the effects of overmixing and how to spot an overmixed dough. Now when made in a mixer, with each revolution of the mixing arm, the dough is picked up and twisted. With this action, the dough is oxidized. A dough that is over oxidized can lose its creamy color and wheaty flavor. Sufficient oxidization is important for gluten development. But if dough is mixed for too long, it will become loose and sticky. The gluten will break down and the water that was absorbed by the flour will get released back into the dough. Getting a bread dough to that stage is not as easy as you may think. And I would think that it's not even possible to do by hand. But we're here to do an experiment, so I'll knead this dough for one hour. It's been 8 minutes. I would call this fully mixed. This dough contains 400 grams of flour and it has hydration of 65%. 8 minutes of kneading is more than enough for this. The temperature is correct, the dough is nice and smooth and cohesive. It is slightly sticky, but that's normal. It would become a lot less sticky after resting for a while. When I pick it up, squeeze it and pull it, it resists. When I try to stretch it thin, it doesn't stretch very easily, it tears. And this is where the window pane test can be quite deceiving. This dough is fully mixed. If it's not left to rest for a minute, it will not produce a nice window. And I think that's why people sometimes go wrong with this test. On the other hand, a dough that is undermixed but left to rest for a while can produce a nice window. And a dough that is way overmixed and destroyed could stretch out beautifully. I hope you see what I'm getting at. I think that feeling a dough, squeezing it, pulling it will tell you a lot more than a window will. I personally never do the window paint test. Right, so back to our dough. It's been 16 minutes, so we doubled the mixing time. The temperature is 29 degrees Celsius. It's way too warm now. The dough feels exactly the same as earlier. And of course, there's no window. I guess I could mix and test this indefinitely, it would still be the same. Temperature control is one thing to worry about when mixing by hand. My hands are warm and my table is quite warm as well. So mixing for too long runs the risk of overheating the dough. And then it starts fermenting too rapidly and you know the rest. So when it comes to over mixing a bread dough by hand, the only thing you should worry about is making it too warm. So it's been half an hour, the temperature has gone up slightly, it's about 30 degrees Celsius now. And again the dough feels pretty much the same as earlier. It does seem a little bit smoother, a little bit less sticky. That's of course a good thing, not a bad thing. Let's stretch it out and see if we can make a window. And of course there's still nothing. I will say that a higher hydration dough would stretch out a little bit more easily. But that's why this test is not universal. Okay, let's just run the final half an hour without stopping. I quickly learned to knead with my left hand because I was trying to avoid getting a repetitive stress injury. 16 minutes in, I can tell you that the dough felt better than I did. I'm definitely not doing this again. So let's take a closer look at the dough and see how it's changed. It was getting stiffer and stiffer as I was kneading it. It does feel like a lower hydration dough at the moment. I'm curious to see how the temperature has changed. 8 minutes in, it was about 26 degrees Celsius. And about 50 minutes later, it's only about 5 degrees warmer. Of course it can't get any warmer than my hands. Now weighing it, I can see that it's lost about 50 grams of its weight. And that's between it being stuck to the table, stuck to my hands and evaporation. And that's why it feels stiffer as if it has lower hydration, it basically dried out as I was kneading it. And of course it hasn't broken down, it's not destroyed, so it's probably not possible to do it by hand. I think it would just get drier and drier, maybe if I knead it for a couple days it would turn back into flour. So let's just quickly make bread out of it and see what we get. And we'll do this with all four doughs made in this video, because a dough could be ruined and broken down, but perhaps you can still make good bread out of it, or at least half decent bread. And this looks pretty good to me, standard white loaf. It has opened up nicely, it has kept its shape, it doesn't look weird or strange. If I had stopped after mixing it only for 8 minutes, it would have still resulted in the same kind of bread. But I am not happy with this. I am on a mission to over mix and destroy a bread dough. So next up, we'll take the same ingredients, we'll mix the dough in a mixer. And we'll check it in the same stages, after 8 minutes, after 16 minutes, after half an hour, then after 1 hour. I'm using about 1 degree cooler water this time. Take note of that, because we'll compare how the dough warms up 
in a mixer versus one mixed by hand. When using mixer, it is good practice to mix the dough first before switching it on. This ensures that the dough gets kneaded from the first second. I always mix on first or second speed. A high hydration dough, or dough that's enriched, may need slightly higher speed, but generally you don't want to mix your dough too fast. The higher the speed, the quicker it will warm up. Okay, so it's been 8 minutes. As I showed in my mixer conversion video, you can mix the dough in your mixer for the same amount of time that you would do by hand. If you keep to the first and second speeds, the dough will develop at pretty much the same rate. So this is fully mixed. It feels exactly the same as the dough that I made by hand after 8 minutes of kneading. It is slightly sticky because of the 65% hydration, but it's nice and cohesive and nice and strong. Let's check the temperature now and see how that's changed. It's only 23 and a half, so the mixer hasn't warmed up the dough that much. Of course, as I mentioned earlier, we started off with slightly cooler water, but this just shows that gentle mixing with a mixer warms up the dough at pretty much the same rate as hand mixing. Of course, different mixer styles will affect the temperature differently. Okay, so let's get our fully mixed perfect dough and stick it back into the mixer and give it 8 more minutes to see how it changes. It doesn't look any different, but let's take it out and examine it a little bit more closely. It kind of feels a little bit more runny, a little bit more sticky, but saying that, a dough right after mixing will always feel a little bit sticky, a little bit runny. It kind of settles and firms up after you let it rest, give it a couple of folds. And when I shape this into a ball, it becomes nice and tight and nice and cohesive. This is by no means broken down. An overmixed white bread dough would be super shiny, it would be wet and extremely sticky. While this is slightly sticky, it's definitely not wet. Well, let's check its temperature and see how that's changed. 26.6 degrees Celsius. It's a little bit warmer than you would want it to be, but it's still not a disaster. Let's place it back into the mixer and leave it on to the half hour mark. If you get your dough to the stage that it's overmixed, it would start sticking to the sides of the bowl. But 30 minutes in, this still looks nice and tight. It does seem that it's becoming a little bit stickier, but of course after being shaped up, it's still fine. I am using strong white bread flour with 13% protein. If you were using weaker flour like all-purpose flour, perhaps the dough would break down sooner. If you use spelt flour or some weaker whole wheat flour, that would break down sooner too. That's what we'll try a little bit later. Here you see the same dough compared. After 8 minutes of mixing and after 30 minutes. It looks the same to me. Let's just check the temperature for curiosity's sake. About 27.3 degrees, so it's not too warm. My hands had it warmed up to about 30 degrees at this point. Right, let's not mess around anymore. We won't destroy this dough. Let's give it another half an hour in the mixer. No one in their right mind would ever mix their dough for so long. There is a chance of breaking the mixer too. Okay, now it looks even stickier than before. And I guess it does look a little bit whiter as well. So perhaps it has come to the point where it's over oxidized. And I wonder, has it been fermenting for this past hour as it was mixing? It sure smelled nice and yeasty. Let's shape it up and see how it compares. Again, in the top left corner, we have the dough as it was after 8 minutes of mixing. It does feel and look very similar. Maybe it was slightly whiter, but it's hard to tell. And when it comes to the wheaty aroma, yeasted white bread dough, which hasn't been fermented for a very long time, is quite bland anyway. So I don't see how you would lose any flavor. Okay, one final temperature check. It's gone just past 28 degrees Celsius. So clearly my hands warm up my dough a lot more than my mixer does. So let's go ahead and see what kind of bread this will make. It'll get the same treatment. Bulk fermentation, a fold, pre-shape, final shape, final proof, and then baking. I can tell you it felt great. It was nice and tight, it kept its shape, it didn't stick to anything. And as you can see, it made a beautiful loaf. It looks better than the previous one. And now I was really on a mission to destroy this dough. So autolization weakens gluten. And a high hydration dough is easier to break down as well. And that's what we have here, a 75% hydration dough, which was hydrated for half an hour before mixing. High hydration dough sometimes does need higher speed of mixing. So I switched it into third and gave it 15 minutes. As you might have seen, the first 5 minutes of mixing were not very effective. The mixer was struggling to pick up this dough. I would call this undermixed. I would probably knead this dough by hand for around 15 minutes. I think the mixer only effectively mixed it for around 10 minutes. Of course, you could just give it a few folds during bulk fermentation to strengthen it, and sometimes bakers intentionally undermix their dough. Strength can always be incorporated during fermentation. Such a method would completely eliminate the risk of overmixing. Let's get this back into the mixer and give it another 5 minutes to fully mix it and see what it will look like. At the moment it's still sticky and shiny, it tears very easily. You know it's getting to the stage of being fully mixed when it starts releasing from the bowl and doesn't stick back to it. 
Of course, the dough is still sticky. That's just the nature of it. Again, a couple of folds during both fermentation would firm it up a lot. But when I pick it up and handle it, and stretch it and ball it up, it feels a lot firmer. It resists my pull. It's a lot smoother than it was before. You should always wet your hands with water when handling sticky dough like this. If you try grabbing this with a dry hand, you will not have a good time. So clearly this dough is nice and strong. It would make a great loaf of bread. But well, we will put it back into the bowl, back into the mixer, and mix it for another 10 minutes on high speed. That should be the end of it. You can kind of see it change. Like I said earlier, once it gets unstuck from the bowl, it's fully mixed. But when it starts sticking to the bowl again, it could be over mixed. 30 minutes in, it kind of looks like it. And of course it's hard to tell from look and feel. It was sticky before, it is sticky now. I guess it's a little bit whiter, but again, that is difficult to tell. Let's just use it to make another loaf and see how it turns out. It felt pretty good. It was rising well. It was as sticky as I would expect it to be. It kept its shape and it held in the fermentation gases. By the time I did the final shaping, it was very strong. And the bread came out even better than the previous two. So even autolization did not allow this dough to be destroyed. But we will definitely destroy the next one. It wouldn't be an overmixing video if I didn't overmix the dough. This dough is 100% whole wheat, 13% protein, with a hydration of 80%. We'll mix it for 10 minutes first and then see how it looks. As I mentioned earlier, this kind of flour is more susceptible to breaking down. It is weaker, especially because of all the bran that it contains. If I was making this by hand, I would probably need it for around 15 minutes. To avoid overmixing, you could mix this only for 10 minutes and then give it a couple of folds during bulk fermentation like I mentioned earlier. That would of course eliminate the risk of overmixing. If you want to learn more about folding, you can find videos about it in the Principles of Baking playlist and in the Steps of Baking playlist. Folding really works wonders and it's a very useful technique. But let's stop playing around and finally destroy this dough. This time I just left the mixer running. I can tell you that the dough was fully mixed at about the 15 minute mark. And around 30 minutes in, it still seemed fine, but then a couple minutes later, my camera switched off and the dough completely broke down. I realized at the 45 minute mark, and that's what the dough looks like when it's completely destroyed. The mixer is not able to pick it up. The gluten has completely broken down. The dough looks shiny. It is wet. We have finally done it, properly. And of course it took longer than expected, but looking at it is just half the story. Let's pick it up and handle it and see how it feels. And clearly it has lost all its strength. As I pull it, it tears very easily. Once you get to this point, there is nothing you can do. There is no way to save it. But let's just see if we can still make bread out of it and what it will be like. As it was fermenting and puffing up, I could see it tearing on the surface. And that's another indicator of the gluten being broken down. I could still shape it and handle it. It was quite sticky, but it would deflate really easily. The gluten structure was not strong enough to keep the fermentation gas inside. It still made a half decent loaf. I mean, it's edible. So that just goes to show, even if the dough is overmixed, you can still make bread with it. So what's the conclusion here? Yes, you can overmix bread though. Different flours react differently. Different mixing methods and different mixes will affect the dough differently. Hydration also plays a big part in this. A wetter dough is easier to destroy. But I guess the most important thing is that the gap between a fully mixed dough and an overmixed one is wider than one might think. So we should definitely not worry about it too much. I would be more worried about my dough getting too warm than being overmixed. But I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. Have you ever overmixed your dough? What kind of flour and what kind of mixer were you using? It only happened to me once, a very long time ago. I think I was making a 85% hydration for catcher dough, and I was beating it up on high speed. It's definitely not something you should do. I definitely learned a thing or two from this video, and I hope you did too. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And if you want to see more videos like this one, click over here. Subscribe to the channel, click right here. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.